Hey, everybody. Ben Fredrickson here from the Post-Dispatch, joined by Stu Durando, our SLU Billikens beat writer, here to talk a little Billikens basketball. I know that folks are fired up about this Billikens basketball team that brought back a ton of talent from last season, um, convinced his guys not to go to the NBA draft and bring back a really strong team that won 23 games last year and didn't get a chance to to see how things were going to go in the A-10 tournament. Stu's going to take us through this team. Who's new? Who's back? And also look at this schedule. Is there one? Uh, as college basketball kind of tries to figure out a way to navigate the COVID uh, climate here, he's been at practices. We'll get his uh, his eye on the team. Stu, how's it going? Very good, Ben. How you doing? Haven't uh, this is the first I've seen maybe any uh, any workmate uh, <laughs> face since uh, <laughs> March. Right. It's good to I've see your face. Nobody. Yeah, no, it's good to it's good to catch up, man. And uh, and I hear people asking me about this Billikens basketball team, and there's there's kind of a couple things they want to know. One is is the team really have a chance to be as good as everybody hopes because it's got these guys back, you know, some key players or seniors. And then the other one is is there going to be a season? What's this thing going to look like? They haven't seen a schedule yet, and uh, it's weird to be this late in the year. Um, you know, into November and not have a college basketball schedule in front of us, but the Billikens are not unique in this. Um, before we dive into kind of the team, what is what does this season look like for SLU right now, where things stand today, knowing it could change? Yeah, well, the, the schedule was never released, which it would normally would have been, um, you know, late July or in August, just because the, there was so much unknown about what was going to happen in terms of the NCA decision on what was how the season was going to go. Um, and once the NCA announced in September that the new starting date was on November 25th, pretty much every division one team had to throw out their schedule. You lost two, two and a half weeks of the season. And then you had to try and salvage what you had for non-conference between November 25th and the start of your conference season. Um, for SLU that hasn't gone so well. They've lost, um, a bunch of games that uh, they had hoped to play in a really, really strong non-conference schedule that Travis Ford had built to try and build a resume for the NCAA tournament. So they lost San Diego State in the A-10 Mountain West Challenge. They lost uh, the first of a home-and-home -home with Memphis that was going to be at Memphis. Uh, they recently found out that Boston College won't be coming to St. Louis. So um, they're scrambling. They also moved, pulled out of the Orlando Invitational um, and then the whole Orlando uh, bubble or whatever you want to call it kind of blew up um, and, and everyone's out of that more or less. And there it looks like they're moving to Lincoln, Nebraska for an MTE to start the season with three games. But right now, nothing announced. Um, it's believed that they're going to play LSU in Northern Iowa in Lincoln uh, they've got a bunch of home games that they're scheduling. They looks like they're going to play at Minnesota right before Christmas. That game um, is going to happen, I think. But otherwise, we have seen nothing. There's nothing on paper, nothing official. And um, as Travis told me a couple of weeks ago, there's never going to be a quote unquote finalized schedule because the whole thing's fluid and, you know, teams are shutting down right now. Because they're having uh, positive COVID tests and they're going into 14-day quarantines. And if that happens um, on December 1st, all of a sudden, games are wiped out. The Missouri women's basketball team just announced that it's practicing now for the first time in like two weeks because of that very reason. We're seeing the Big Ten and its football protocols kind of starting to cut into Wisconsin's football season. Um, so, yeah, I think it's going to be a fluid, fluid situation. But the... The truth of the matter is, if the Billikens are on the court with games to play, they should be a very good team. I mean, and that's kind of the counterbalance to this excitement, right, is no one knows what the season will look like, but we do know enough to know the Billikens should be pretty good if they have their players. They won 23 games last year. They had won five games in a row before you were there to cover the uh, A-10 tournament, and all of a sudden there was no, no game to cover um, and had to come back home. Um, and then – this offseason, they got the news that the three guys who had considered leaving for the NBA draft, Jordan Goodwin, um, Hassan French, and uh, and I'm, who am I forgetting? Of in, uh, those in were my, the only two, actually, that, two. that okay. under their names. Yeah. That's Javante right. Javante right. Perkins, I guess, could have, but did not. That's right. Javante Perkins is back as well. 
but also Yuri Collins, the talented, uh, the talented point guard. Um, you have Jimmy Bell Jr., the big man who's back. And even some news now that uh, Fred Thatch, who was supposed to be kind of a, a key part of last year's team, but was sidelined for some, some complicated health issues that you've reported on, is back. And, and they think he's going to be able to contribute. And Gibson Jimerson, who's a really nice deep threat for this team, has recovered nicely from, from a foot injury. And, and he's back. This team has pretty much everybody who, who con- con- contributed in a major way last year is, is back with more experience for this season. Yeah, he's the, this team is deeper than any team that um, uh, Travis has had at SLU, for sure. Um, you know, you look at what you had, a very explosive offensive team that was playing as well at the end of the season last year as they have um, during his tenure there. And um, you add those weapons, potential weapons, plus some newcomers, and it's going to be pretty interesting. He's tended to... Um, start with a, a rotation, you know, that maybe went 10, 11 and get it down to about eight um, later in the season. That's going to be really interesting to see what he does with this team, because um, to get that, if, if he did get down to say eight players in a rotation, you're, you're weeding out some pretty talented players. Um, and so the depth is one thing that could, you know, is really going to play in their favor, especially if you start seeing injuries, um, you know, they're considered a, favorite in the A-10 along with Richmond. Richmond already lost a starter to a torn ACL, um, and they don't have the depth that the Billikens have. So, um, you know, you don't want to see injuries, but if they have injuries, they're very deep, and they can fill in those spots um, with less problem than they would have in the past. What are, who are some of the new players, some of the guys? I mean, everybody knows Goodwin and, and French, and certainly we're excited to see Collins last year. Who are some of the new guys or, or players you think could be – bigger factors this season um, than they were last year, either by because they weren't around last year or because they're, they're increasing their, uh, their role. Yeah. Well, the, the, there's three newcomers and they, you know, right now, any of them could play a role. There's a freshman, Markai Strickland, super athletic um, uh, wing player and um, seeing him in practice, he, he can, you know, quote unquote, jump out of the gym. You've got a transfer big man in Martin Linson, a uh, German from NC, I don't want to get this wrong, Greensboro, I believe, um, who ha- is a, technically a grad transfer, but he has two years of eligibility remaining, and he helps up front with uh, Hassan French and Jimmy Bell. And then you have the Swedish freshman guard, uh, Andre Lorentzen, who was kind of a find they made on a recruiting trip that's pretty interesting uh, in the middle of last season. And uh, he's here after a delay in getting his visa and being able to travel from Sweden. And I think they really like um, his potential. Well, they like the potential of all of them, but he is a a, a tall uh, shooting guard, play inside also, but um, his shooting has been off the charts um, just in the gym. And the thought of him possibly being on the court on opposite sides with uh, Gibson Jimerson and having two shooters of that quality um, along with some other shooters is um, pretty exciting for them. It could be a way to help their perimeter shooting, which hasn't been the best um, oh, <laughs> in recent awful. seasons. Yeah. The first few <laughs> Travis's first three years, it was just awful. What a- um, and he's always given though, you know, he always gives those guys green lights to shoot um, right. regardless of how good his good shooters are. Um, but you know, last year with, when Jimerson showed that he can, you know, be a big time contributor at the D one level in his first 10, 12 games of division one basketball, uh, Perkins, uh, is a good perimeter shooter. He was bad in non-conference and he really warmed up and during a 10 season, um, Fred Thatch is a, a pretty good perimeter shooter. Good one is decent. Um, so yeah, this could be a really good shooting team. What about Terrence Hargrove Jr.? He's not new. We saw him play last season, but he uh, is maybe poised to make a big leap in terms of what he's able to do compared to last season. A guy, as you mentioned about one of the others, can certainly jump out of the gym. But I we saw moments where he looked like a player who could be a star of this team, and then moments where he oh, looked yeah. like a freshman. What do you think is going to be uh, do for him in his sophomore season? Yeah, he got off to a slow start, and you know Travis talked about that, and and he admitted it. He just had a lot 
um, that he was adjusting to. It didn't come quickly for him um, as a guy who had four or five coaches during his high school career, never had any consistency. So it just took him some time. Um, he wasn't getting very many minutes, some games, none uh, early in the season. And then um, they stuck him in, in a, a game against uh, Maryville and he ended up scoring 27 points. Now I'll be at a division two opponent, but you know, he started to show his potential. And from that point on, he started to get more time. His defense started to improve. Um, his understanding of what they were doing improved and he just looked a lot more comfortable on the court. And the guy, as we know, is just, an, you know, an athletic freak. All right. One more question for me, Stu, and then we'll let, we'll let you run, but what's, is the free throw shooting going to be better this year? It's uh, one thing I, I don't want to talk line. about free throw shooting. 50, 58% at the free throw line last year. It's, Travis yeah. has said last, it's going to get better. Is it getting, is it going to get better? Yeah, I, I say I don't want to talk about it. I prefer not to write about it during the season, I guess, is, <laughs> um, is the thing because it was so pervasive and has been. Yeah, 58%, worst in the country. Um, it seemed to be a contagious thing that when um, they started missing them, even the guys who were good percentage shooters would miss them. Um, you know, there were games where you could argue that it cost them uh, a win. Um I, I tweeted the other day and I, uh, people were excited uh, from practice that they had a, a drill um, and then Travis had guys pair off and shoot to see which group was going to have to run. And he used, uh, I believe the first group was, the well, first one was Martin Linson and Hassan French and they both made two. So he went to another round and then another round and they made the six guys made 12 straight free throws. All right. Twitter was, Twitter uh, was a buzz. So, um, <laughs> you know, yeah, it's got to get better. They've added guys who can shoot. I, Hassan's going to get better. And I would say if he could get around to 50%. Oh and, yeah. Um, um, Cause he's been around 35 or under. Um, if, if, you know, good one, I'm convinced there's no reason he shouldn't shoot 70% and he's struggled. And then everyone else should be fairly solid. And um, yeah, I, I, I think we'll see it creep over 60% this year. That's, that's my bold, bold prediction. That's a bold prediction. I like <laughs> it. I like it. And I hope that uh, I hope they're, they're on the court to, to shoot them. It's good to hear they're practicing. It's good to see, good to see college basketball coverage and hopefully fingers crossed that the Billikens can, can navigate this, uh, this COVID season as well as, any of the teams out there, because you mentioned the excitement. It's real. I mean, people are fired up about this team and, uh, and, and for good reason, you know, they, they did a lot of good things last year and they got a lot of those faces back. So we'll have all the coverage at STL today.com. Stu, keep up the great work. We'll check in um, a little bit closer to the season. We have a, a I would say a, a, a tentative commitment from Travis Ford to maybe be involved in one of these slew zooms. So uh, if we stop talking we'll about them in. Maybe he'll uh, maybe he'll agree to uh, jump on with us. We won't bring up free throw shooting when he joins the video. How about that? We'll make a we'll make a commitment. Stu, keep we'll up. We'll talk the about work. his free throw shooting. He's great. He can make 15, yeah. 20 in a row. Still, I've seen him do it. Um, that's probably why it drives him crazy. Um, Stu, thanks for doing this, man. Take care, and we'll talk to you soon. Okay. Very good. Let's do it again.